Hi, I'm Felipe from Texerera.com and I have a very special guest. He's going to introduce his, himself. I'm Ross Mestechkin. I'm Director of Corporate Sales uh, for Latin America uh, for MediaTek. Uh, MediaTek is a global semiconductor manufacturing company, one of the top uh, five semiconductor manufacturers in the world, uh, with particular emphasis on the mobile business. And uh, I think we're here to talk about uh, MediaTek technology, mobile space, and uh, things, of th things technological. Totally. So tell me a little bit of, about what ha you have seen in the smartphone industry right now in 2016. What are the trends? Sure. So I think there are two major uh, trends that we need to talk about. One is um, related to communication specifically in the mobile space. What I mean by communication is the modem side of things. Uh, com um, you know, movement of uh, from recently 2G to 3G and now to 4G LTE technology. Um, I think this side of um, mobile space is perhaps less uh, intuitive to the general consumer, but I think all of us are realizing now that the carriers uh, are uh, investing heavily into newer communication technology, better um, connectivity, better coverage, better um, quality of service. So whether it's data communication or even now with voice over LT, you know, high quality audio, and you actually talk to somebody and. It doesn't sound like a phone anymore. It sounds like <laughs> yeah. you're talking uh, real you know, life. Real life, right? Um, and I think you know, in, in the not so distant future, we're talking about um, video over LTE, where you know we actually we're finally going to have a, a video communication on your mobile phone without any additional um, applications set up on top of it. It's basically going to be part of regular phone call. So that's kind of where we are moving. And it's been a great year for MediaTek in terms of the growing uh, our 4G space. Last year we had a fantastic year, 2015, and secured a market share um, in Latin America, in Colombia specifically, in the 3G space. And this year the target has been to continue to progress and grow um, in the LTE space. And we have done that. Um, so today MediaTek has um, uh, around 43%, according to IDC analysts, uh, market share uh, of units sold, meaning mobile handsets sold in, in Colombia in 2016, first half of 2016. 43% of the phones sold in Colombia were based on our um, processors, on our chipsets. Um, the other major trend is probably a lot more visible to the general consumer, and that's things that we get to see. It's multimedia, it's uh, camera features, it's uh, display features, it's gaming, it's uh, artificial, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, Pokemon Go, things like yeah. that. And of course, that comes with the battery consumption. So today, you know, if you look at the what consumers demand is they want great camera, they want fantastic display. In fact, these days the displays on our phones are uh, outpacing the, the, the TVs that we have at home. You know, we're talking about 2K, 4K displays. Not a lot of us, including myself, have a 4K TV at home. But, you know, in the next couple of years, a lot of us are going to have 4K phones in our pocket. So. Yeah, we have seen some uh, initiatives from uh, some of the hardware vendors, but it's not popular yet here. It's not popular yet because it's costly, right? So, uh, but you know, it's a, it's a bit of a chicken and egg thing. Uh, once the market adopts it and it becomes more of a less of a gimmick, less of a high-end feature, less of a you know something for the wealthy, um, the volume picks up and the market adjusts. You know, that's the beauty of capitalism system, right? If there is a demand, the supply comes, right? And we're seeing that, for example, in Asia, you know, Asia is a, China is a, one of the largest market for mobile in the world, right? And they're starting to switch into bigger screens. That's another thing, right? We're going yeah. from, you know, three and a half inch to four inch and now five, five inches, basically the, the minimum, right? And people are looking at five and a half inch and tablets, six inches. And frankly, by the time you have a six inch uh, screen with high resolution in your pocket, my children who are teenagers, they no longer watch uh, their content uh, on, on TV. You know, they watch it you know, in their rooms, which we still don't have TVs in their rooms. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't really need it because the, they have a, their iPhone or their Android phone and they have their streaming video and that's it, right? You really don't know what they're watching, <laughs> which yeah. perhaps is one of the challenges, right? Um, so multimedia, uh, frankly, is MediaTek's strength. Um, the, the name MediaTek includes media in it because that's our that's our DNA. That's where we came from, from multimedia, from TV, Blu-ray, DVD space. And so um, 
when we got into mobile phones, so these were still bar phones, you know, so this is five, six, seven, eight years ago, right? They were still basic feature phones, what we call feature phones. Now that we are in the smartphone space, which are no longer phones, they're communication devices, they're entertainment devices, they're lifestyle devices, if you will, right? The, our strength in multimedia is becoming front and center. So we launched some very interesting technologies, frankly developed in the past for TV and for big screens, onto the smaller screens now. Things like um, we have a technology called uh, Mirror Vision, which focuses on color reproduction, sharpness, um, saturation, um, power consumption by the display. So all these interesting things related specifically to how to make the visual experience by the consumer as good as possible without hopefully draw, dry, driving the cost because obviously the easiest way to achieve high quality, high performance is to spend, right? And surprisingly, that's not very difficult to do. You know, to buy the absolute top of the line display and make a $700 phone, um, you know, it has its own challenges, right? If you want to be the best, right? But it's not as hard as taking perhaps um, something a little bit more cost efficient and have the quality of display and quality of the screens compensated perhaps and some of the know-hows and secret sources that we have how to make things look to human eye as good as the ultra expensive you know top of the line iPhone right and that's where we developed a lot of interesting know-how uh, how to we understand how human eye perceives the images we understand how it perceives the videos and we've invested a lot in making that available to our um, phone manufacturing partners so I would say those are the two Legs and frankly, I, I think the the three G, four G, uh, LTE, Volte transition maybe doesn't get as much um, recognition from the consumer audience, uh, but it's a very um, investment intensive area where we continue to invest. You know, our annual investment in R and D is about one and a half billion US dollars. Right? Wow! So um, all this technology that looks very straightforward, simple, and oftentimes can be bought for very little investment um, takes a lot to, to develop and to bring to the consumer level and that's where we think MediaTek's strength is. Okay, so as a customer and as a user, I can expect uh, new phones that do more and cost less? Um, I would say it's not really anymore a race to make phones even cheaper. I think it's the race to take the features from the high-end phones that are perhaps only available in the ultra-premium category right now. So think back a couple of years, you know, five and a half inch phone would be six, seven, eight hundred dollar phone, right? Now we have the five, five and a half inch phones in the, in the mainstream category. Once you have five and a half inch phone, you can see the details very well. So you now start caring about how that video looks, how the colors look, how how does it look like on the outside in the bright sunshine. So all these things become more visible and more important because you no longer use it just to check text messages. You use it for everything, right? So you care how it looks. So I would say uh, the trend is now to have some of those features that were only available to ultra premium category be more mainstream. So I would expect for the perhaps same amount of money that you paid for your last phone, you'll get a lot more, um, you know, bigger, better, faster, more power efficient. That's kind of where we are today. Okay, and what will you see coming? I know that you cannot tell us everything, but uh, like a sneak peek for 2017. So um, I think the things that uh, are coming to the mainstream now um, are more this high-end, super, super performing processors. You know, we're talking about uh, DecaCore. Um, MediaTek has developed this Helio line of products. Helio is our premium line of um, chipsets that go now into um, kind of more premium products from you know all kinds of uh, vendors, starting from local vendors like Linux and uh, Aprix here in here in Colombia to global ones like uh, Lenovo, Motorola. Asian brands that are coming now, you know, Huawei and, and Meizu's and, and Oppo and Vivo, they're the big global Chinese brands. If you look at the list of the top brands now in the world, you know, three out of five are from China, right? So, um, the sneak preview would be, one is you will see this kind of super chips where, um, you know, we call tri-cluster architecture. So, to explain what tri-cluster architecture means is it's not just about the number of cores in the processor anymore. You know, obviously, bigger is better, but smart bigger is better. So the analogy we use is, you know, for football fans, it's very clear. You know what four four two um, um, means? Means right? You have you know 
defenders, forwards, and everybody has their own function. So in a good team, people are not randomly running around and kicking the ball, right? That's not football. Um, so similarly, when we develop our DECA core, it's a tri-cluster architecture, 4-4-2. Four, four, we have four very small cores, which are extremely power, power efficient. Um, and they run when you have something very small, text messages, or maybe um, you will read in Facebook, but just the text section of it that's already pre-rendered. We have four medium cores, which work probably most of the time when you do more heavy lifting. And then we have two ultra high-end super power cores um, that basically your strikers, your forwards, right? So these are the ones that you know you scroll your, through your Facebook and they kick in when it sees a video or some kind of complicated rendering, right? And so the idea is why when you have this dedicated um, optimized uh, resources on your chip, um, you could be very efficient, right? You don't need to run your strikers to defend. <laughs> you only use them, and so they don't run out of breath, and you don't, you know, you don't have to replace them, right? So that's a similar, very similar idea to, to football. Uh, what that translates into is a seamless efficiency. So when you need power, you get power instantly. And when you don't need all this performance, um, the battery doesn't die, right? So this is kind of where we're moving. The, we call this technology uh, core pilot. It's not something that the Facebook or the software developer has to worry about. It runs under the hood. So it's all good coaching. If you want to call <laughs> core pilots, basically the coach behind that says, you guys do this and you guys do that at this moment, right? Um, so that's the core pilot DECA core Helio architecture. That's probably one exciting area that we're starting to see. And it's propagating, you know, from premium to mainstream. Um, and we're excited, you know, we're going to uh, announce new product uh, for next year, the next generation of this DECA core, with uh, we're adopting the latest semiconductor manufacturing technology in 10 nanometers. That basically means even smaller transistors, even more of them in the same footprint, with the same hopefully or better power consumption. So more performance with less power consumption, very highly specialized with good coaching. Right? Um, that's probably one thing that we're going to see in the preview. And why it, why it matters, I mean, if you look at the power consumption, that's one of the biggest bottlenecks now, right? Now that we start seeing things like artificial reality, um, VR, right? That area is, you know, the first thing that sold out in Amazon store when um, Pokemon Go went viral in the United States uh, was the battery packs, right? Totally. Because the phone started to run out of battery in a couple of hours, right? So six months ago, people were saying, yeah, battery consumption is okay. It lasts a day, and I don't need to charge it, and we're getting close to this is good. And then in a matter of a couple months, no battery packs in the store because people are starting to use artificial reality, and uh, sorry, uh, augmented reality. Yeah. And frankly, we are, you know, it's one game, right? I mean, can you imagine how many millions of developers are sitting right now um, in their offices and trying to come up with the next greatest uh, AR, VR application? Or, or blended reality. Correct. That, that's what we call augmented when it's a mix, right? Okay. So, so I think we haven't really scratched the surface in terms of um, the technology that we need really to support this kind of demand, right? So that's one area. Um, we're spending a lot on audio, believe it or not. I mean, for a while the industry forgot that phone is still a phone, right? And now we have uh, <laughs> Volti, uh, voice over LTE, right, where the high quality of sound can be sent. Well, you need to capture it. You need to process it. So, you know. Most higher-end phones now have uh, dual microphones, right? So they could do uh, noisy environments, uh, cancellation, echo cancellation. This is all digital signal processing. It's a pretty mathematically intensive stuff. Uh, and we've spent a lot of resources trying to make audio better. So processing power, battery consumption, um, that's two key areas. The next big thing also seems to be um, com computer learning and computer vision. Right? So no longer you just take a picture, but you want your phone to, well, at the minimum, recognize the faces, right? Yeah. You already start seeing this. But a lot of it is done on the cloud, right? So the pictures get uploaded, and a huge ser server sits there and sifts through your, pro your, your pictures and says, oh, I know that person, that's your child, right? <laughs> um, but we are starting to see more and more of that needed to be done in real time, right? So when you do AR, VR applications, maybe for... Uh, I don't know, um, inventory control in the, in the stores or for in business applications and, and for stuff we haven't even dreamed of yet, right? Because like I said, there are millions of developers sitting in their offices and their basements and they're all over the world and, and as we speak are coming out with the next greatest killer application for AR, VR. Um, 
so there you need to be able to recognize things in real time, not send it to the server and wait for the feedback. So we're investing into computer vision and deep learning. That's kind of the next, I would say, you know, this is next couple of years that's coming out, but we're already starting to put um, hardware in place and software in place to expect the applications. Because remember, software is much quicker to market than the hardware. So to build a processor takes a massive effort and it takes you know, at least a year to develop, right? So we need to plan today what will be sold in Colombia and North America at the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, right? Wow. So it's challenging. So you try to do as much as possible and hope that it will be taken advantage of. And that's kind of where we are today. Okay. We are looking forward for it. Thank you. Thank you.